Hello, Hugh. Uh, uh, Hugh is my student. Uh, Hugh, you've been with me for two and a half years. And what part of England are you from again? Cornwall, far southwest. Far south. And how do you spell that? C O R N W A L L. Cornwall. Cornwall. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's let's talk about Goethe for, for a few minutes. Um, you were before you met uh, me and the work that I do because I work with Gurdjieff and Spinoza. Uh, what? Uh, uh, give me a background about your Gurdjieff participation. So I joined a Gurdjieff group around uh, the late nineties, and um, we used to go every other weekend to meetings about 50 miles from where I lived. There was about 12 or 15 of us, I suppose, who met and two group leaders. My word. And how long were you involved with group of groups? So that particular group was for about 10 years. How, how old were you when you first were exposed to Gurdjieff? So I would have gone when I was about 50. Yeah, so it was between me being 50 and 60. I was in this So that's group. when you first were introduced to Gurdjieff? By, well, I knew 50. about the ideas before, but this is okay. the, the main group that I've been in. What books of Gurdjieff did you study? We didn't t do too much on, on the books themselves. So, I mean, we we, we would have Gurdjieff's books. Um, we would have used Uspensky's In Search of the Miraculous a bit, but the emphasis wasn't really on books or readings. It was very much on practical work, self-observation, and then the leaders would have um, a meeting at the end of the day when we would make comments about our what we'd done during the day. Okay. And how long were your meetings? Meetings would be an hour. Okay. And uh, how often did you meet? So this was once a fortnight, a Saturday okay. or a Sunday. Is it once a fort fortnight? That is uh, every two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks, yes. Every two weeks. So one hour every two weeks. Well, the, the meet, we'd meet the whole day, but the actual, at the end of the day, we'd oh. have a one hour meeting. So you're meeting the whole day, and then uh, the leaders would have a uh, have a talk at the end of the day, at the end of the session. We were all expected to make a contribution, so that we would be expected to ask a question, and the leaders would then answer that question. Okay, okay, very good. And do you feel what did you learn in that environment about yourself? Um, I'm not sure. I I felt I learned to. I I can't think of anything in particular that I did learn. Well, more about the 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 whole Gurdjieff work and what um, Gurdjieff's ideas. All right. If you talk about observation. What did you observe? Well, ourselves and how we were ourselves just doing the tasks that we'd been set to do during the day. So and, what do you and, mean, observe your, yourselves? You mean observe your body? Observe the body, observe what was going on in our minds, observe our reactions to what was happening around us. When you say, what about your mind? How did you observe your mind? What? What, wherever our thinking was taking us. Okay, um, all right. Now, you were saying that the reason you decided to work with me uh, is why, why, what motivated you to call me? So I found this wasn't sufficient for me. There was something missing. I didn't seem to be making progress and it seemed to me that the emotional side was what I was missing and needed to develop.
myself. Okay. So you're talking about the emotional side. All right, now this I want to just talk about Gurdjieff a, little, uh, <clears throat> a bit. Uh, when I first met my teacher, and I met my teacher in 1970, I was uh, uh, 30 years old. And for the next two years, 1970, uh, we studied Gurdjieff. And uh, through Spinoza, uh, Ospensky's book, In Search of the Miraculous, and also uh, Maurice Nicole's books, the volumes, there were four volumes, and also Ospensky's book on the fourth way. So we did a lot of study with Spinoza, I mean, not Spinoza, Gurdjieff. And uh, there were a lot of things that we took, like self observation, uh, the idea of buffers. The idea, the, the idea of knowledge and being, and the idea of essence and personality and self observations, and there are many ideas. However, we avoided, which did not uh, work with us in our group, uh, was the idea of studying the enneagram and the octaves and the dancing and the movements. That was not relevant to what we were working with. My teacher led uh studied Gurdjieff to a certain point because it com complemented Spinoza. But I want to stay with Gurdjieff and because Gurdjieff brought out some profound ideas. And one of the ideas he talks about is there's a difference between knowledge and being. And that is on page 65 in, in Search of the Miraculous. And I want to go over that because even though those of you who are able to follow what we're doing here, uh, I just want to emphasize some ideas about Gurdjieff and the importance of Gurdjieff, Gurdjieff's work, and how can it be applied. Most individuals who study Gurdjieff uh, do it intellectually, and there's no change is possible when, uh, when, uh, when we read something on an intellectual basis. Gurdjieff talks about the idea that we must understand. And understanding is possible when we incorporate our whole being, he calls it our whole mass, our emotions, our intellect, our emotions, and our body all together, our whole mass. Then we're able to say assimilate the ideas. If they're only, if we only apply the mind, uh, it becomes abstract. So let's go to page 65 and would you read from the top please. People understand what knowledge means, and they understand the possibility of different levels of knowledge. They understand that knowledge may be lesser or greater, that is to say, of one quality or of another quality. But they do not, not understand this in relation to being. Being for them means simply existence, to which is opposed just non-existence. They do not understand that being or existence may be a very different levels and categories. Take, for instance, the being of a mineral and of a plant. It is a different being. The being of a plant and of an animal is again a different being. The being of an animal and of man is a different being. But the being of two people can differ from one another more than the being of a mineral and of an animal. This is exactly what people do not understand. They do not understand that knowledge depends on being. Not only do they not understand this latter, but they definitely do not wish to understand it. And especially in Western culture, it is considered that a man may possess great knowledge for example, he may be an able scientist, make discoveries, advance science, and at the same time, he may be and has the right to be a petty, egoistic, caviling, mean, envious, vain, naive and absent-minded man. It seems to be considered here that a professor must always forget his umbrella everywhere. And yes... Very good. I want to go over what we just read. Uh, people understand what knowledge means. Now, knowledge, 
Western society has, has uh, puts a great value on knowledge. You might be a scientist, a mathematician, a professor, a teacher, a, uh, a, a doctor, a lawyer, uh, or a mechanic, having great knowledge in that area, an engineer. However, that knowledge does not help an individual with his character. Now, Spinoza Gurdjieff talks about there's knowledge, there's knowledge, and then there's being. What is what is he? What do you think he's talking about? The being of the individual. What is the being? What is it? What does he mean by knowledge? And there's knowledge, and then there's the being of the individual. The being is everything that makes up that person: his personality, his habits, every, and all the past that's made him the person he is at the moment. Excellent. Yes. So there's so an individual has great knowledge, might be an able scientist, as Gurdjieff was saying. But that knowledge does not change the being of the individual. He also talks about the idea that an animal is the being of an animal is different from, say, the being of a plant. But he also says that there's a there's a, there's a great difference, even a greater difference between two individuals. The being of one individual can be so so different from the being of another individual, much greater than what's different from the being of a plant and an animal. What do you think he's talking about? So we are all very different. Um, many things have affected us during our life and we, we've taken them on board. Okay, but what he's talking about, Hugh, and I want you to understand this. See, I've been working with Gurdjieff and Spinoza for the last 50 years, so I know what is, Gurdjieff is talking about. And this is a good example. You've been exposed to Gurdjieff for, say, 20, 30 years, and now work with me for two years, and we've talked about this. You talk about the being of the individual is everything in that image of his whole character. But what makes one being different from another? What makes one man different from the other? One individual is awake and is in a conscious state. That being is so different from an individual who is asleep, who acts totally from his ego state. Is that clear? Yes. So the individual acts from an intelligence. An awake state is an intelligent. See, this is where Bishop doesn't really go beyond what he talks about coming to a conscious state. What is a conscious state? What does the awake state look like? I've learned through my under my knowledge of Spinoza and Gurdjieff that an awake state is an, an awake intelligence state. It's a higher mind mental state, not just mental, but a thinking state, clarity state, having truth and understanding state. So an individual who is totally uh, in his awake state is living from his intelligence. An individual who is in a sleep state is living from his ego personality state, which is uh, uh, is comprised of all the knowledge that is in the memory, and all that makes the character. As you were saying, the being of the individual is all his character. So everything that that individual learned since infancy, all the beliefs, all the attitudes, all the habits, all the patterns of thinking and behavior is stored information, belief, hearsay information, the lowest level of knowledge is in the memory. And that is what the ego state relies on. Now we need the ego. We need the personality to learn how to exist in life. But we are more than ego. We are have this intelligent state consciousness that's possible for us. And Gurdjieff talks about it, but he doesn't really explain how to get there. Not as well as Spinoza, but again, I want to emphasize on, on, on Gurdjieff. Now, I want us to go over, so on page 65, Gurdjieff talks about the problems of knowledge and being the difference. Excellent. Let's go, let's read at, and yet, the middle of the page, 
and yet it is his being. And yet it is his being, and people think that his knowledge does not depend on his being. People of Western culture put great value on the level of a man's knowledge, but they do not value the level of a man's being, and are not ashamed of the low level of their own being. They do not even understand what it means, and they do not understand that a man's knowledge depends on the level of his being. If knowledge gets far ahead of being, it becomes theoretical and abstract and inapplicable to life, or actually harmful, because instead of serving life and helping people, the better to struggle with the difficulties they meet, it begin to, begins to complicate man's life, brings new difficulties into it, new troubles and calamities which were not there before. The reason for this is that knowledge, which is not in accordance with being, cannot be large enough for or sufficiently suited to man's real needs. It will always be a knowing of one thing together with ignorance of another thing, a knowledge of the detail without a knowledge of the whole, a knowledge of the form without a knowledge of the essence. Beautiful. That's it for right now. Now, again, Spinoza, I mean, Goethe, sorry, Goethe talks about that the reality that if knowledge gets too far ahead of being, it's not applicable, we cannot apply it. And that's why he says that a science could have all the knowledge, but he also he can be a very mean, narcissistic, conviling, conviling meaning uh, uh, petty objections. Uh, he might be a narcissistic, and type of individual. So he has great knowledge. He goes, and like a doctor, a big complaint about doctors, they have all this knowledge and they may be excellent. And they, they are highly revered and regarded in the hospital or their medical practice. But at home, they cannot relate to their, their children or their spouse or their partner because they're not in touch with their emotions. And you said something very important, you, is that one thing that was missing in your study with Gurdjieff, you did not get into your emotions. Everything was intellectual, reading, abstract. It wasn't applicable, applicable to life. And that's why I want to emphasize that Gurdjieff gives us a lot of great information, no question, but it's not enough. If you are a student of Gurdjieff and only that, your growth will be limited. And you might not like what I'm saying, but it's emphasized that you've been working with me for two over two years, two and a half years, Hugh, and you made some dramatic changes. Would you say so? Yes, it's brought new things into my life. Brought new things you do, you're married, you have been married for over 40 years with Susan, and she's been a source of your uh, thorn so to speak, because she's highly emotional and you are highly intellectual. But Spinoza and Gurdjieff says something very important. He says that there is a great difference between uh, not only knowledge and being, but personality and essence. And that personality is the material for growth. So the ego expresses the personality and the personality ego state is easily offended when it does not get its way, when its desires are not met. So Susan has been your partner, your spouse for over 40 years, and she has triggered you because she does things that annoy you. And that's what we want to study. But that is another project. I want to emphasize on Gurdjieff right now. But the idea of Gurdjieff is bringing out some very important issues about man is asleep. So I want us to go to page 66 for a moment. The third line from the top, taken in itself. Taken in itself, a man's being has many different sides. The most char characteristic feature of a modern man is the absence of unity in him. And further, the absence in him of even traces of these properties 
which he most likes to ascribe to himself, that is, lucid consciousness, free will, a permanent ego or I, and the ability to do. It may surprise you if I say that the chief feature of a modern man's being, which explains everything else that is lacking in him, is sleep. Stop for a moment. Excellent. Now, I want to emphasize something that Spinoza uh, has talked about. He said, Every, what is lacking in man, that is, he lacks understanding that he is asleep. And that's what we can, you can read Spinoza, or we can read Kirchhoff, and think you, and read him like a novel. You're in search of the miraculous, and some of you say, well, that's not enough. You must read all of Kirchhoff. No. I want to emphasize that in here, in search of miraculous, I think Ospensky did an excellent job documenting everything that he heard. He was a good, great recorder, Ospensky. I'm not sure how well he understood Kirchhoff, but he was great in documenting what he heard. And what he's saying here, that man's being has many different sides. The most uh, characteristic feature of modern man is the absence of unity in him. He believes that he, uh, he ascribes to himself a lucid consciousness, consciousness, free will, a permanent eye, and the ability to do. Man lives in this unconscious state. And that's what I think what was so magnificent of Goethe and so profound. But he began to see this in man, that we are asleep. What is asleep, though? the awakened, conscious state of mind. This intelligence that desires to understand itself, the mind and the body. All right, we're going to end this for right now. We're going to continue these studies. So we stopped at page 66 on the, on the very top of the page for those who want to follow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hugh, for participating. And we'll do this again. And I'll okay. see you next time. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you, Lewis. Bye. You're very welcome.